Contemporary Approaches to Cognitive Psychology. Paradigms of Cognitive Psychology. Paradigms. A body of knowledge structured according to what its proponents consider important and that they do not. It include assumptions and investigators make in studying a phenomenon. Paradigms also specify what kinds of experimental methods and measures are appropriate for an investigation. Paradigms are thus intellectual frameworks that guide investigators in studying and understanding phenomena. The contemporary approaches are 1. Information Processing Approach 2. Computational Approach 3. Connectionist Approach 4. Psychophysics 5. Constructivist Approach 6. Neurophysiological Approach 7. Ecological Approach 8. Evolutionary Approach 1. Information Processing Approach According to Atkinson and Schifrin, 1998. This approach dominated cognitive psychology in 1960s and 1970s and remain influential today. The information processing approach draws an analogy between human cognition and computerized processing of information. Central to information. Processing approach is the idea that cognition can be thought of as information passing through a system. Researchers assume that information is processed, received, stored, recorded, transformed, retrieved and transmitted in stages and that it is stored in specific places while being processed. One goal within this framework is to determine what these stages and storage places are and how they work. Some assumptions about the approach are people's cognitive abilities can be thought of as systems of interrelated capacities. Information processing theorists try to find relationship between these capacities to explain how individuals go about performing specific cognitive tasks. In accordance with computer metaphor, People, like computers, can perform astonishing cognitive feats by applying only a few mental operations to symbols. Information is then stored symbolically, and the way it is coded and stored greatly affects how easy it is to use it later. A typical information processing model The information processing tradition is rooted in structuralism, in that its followers attempt to identify the basic capacities and processes we use in cognition. Computer metaphor used in this approach also shows an indebtedness to the fields of engineering and communications. Psychologists working in the information processing tradition are interested in relating individual and developmental differences to differences in basic capacities and processes. 2. Computational approach It is governed by mathematical relationships, and requires computation because it would take too long to do it all by hand, usually because there are complex relationships that require many computations. Typically one sets up a simulation with the desired parameters and lets the computer run. One then looks at the output to interpret the behavior of the model verbally expressed statements are sometimes flawed by internal inconsistencies, logical contradictions, theoretical weaknesses and gaps. Computational modeling is used to study a wide range of complex systems. Some examples include forecasting the weather analyze and make predictions based on numerous atmospheric factors. Documented neuroplasticity effects of working memory, IQ training for increasing IQ, general intelligence, executive functioning and other cognitive processes are also included. 3. Connectionist approach. Connectionism is the framework which is an alternative to the information. Processing approach began early in the 1980s. It is also called parallel, distributed processing or PDP. The name is derived from models depicting cognition as a network of connections among simple processing units. Connectionist models are sometimes called neural networks because these units are sometimes compared to neurons. Each unit is connected to other units in a large network. Each unit has some level of activation at any particular moment in time. The exact level of activation depends on the input to that unit from both the environment and the other units to which it is connected. Connection between two units have weights, which can be positive or negative. A positively weighted connection raises the level of activation of units to which it is connected. Negativity weighted connection inhibiting or lowering the activation of connected units. One major difference between information, processing and connectivist approaches is the manner in which cognitive processes are assumed to occur. According to Dawson, 1998, in information, Processing approach it is assumed to occur serially and in connectivist model, cognitive processes occur in parallel. The connectionist framework allows for a wide variety of models which can be vary in the number of units hypothesized, number and pattern of connections among units, and connection of units to the environment. The main assumption of this model is there is no need to hypothesize a central processor that directs the flow of information from one process or storage area to another. Instead, 
different patterns of activation account for the various cognitive processes. Knowledge is stored within connections between units and not in various storehouses. Learning occurs when new connective patterns are established that change the weights of connections between units. Feldman and Ballard, 1982, in early description of connectionism, argue that this approach is more consistent than information processing approach. They argue brain is made up of many neurons connected to one another in various complex ways. According to Rummelhart, 1989, connectionism seeks to replace the computer metaphor with brain metaphor. Connectionism also dress from structuralism and interest in the elements of cognitive functioning. It looked to cognitive neuropsychology and cognitive neuroscience for information to help them construct their theories and models. This model are more concerned with subsymbolic level, how cognitive processes actually could be carried out by a brain. Connectionism is just beginning to map out explanations for individual and developmental differences. 4. Psychophysical approach Psychophysics is the study of sensory, perceptual, and cognitive systems, based on the evidence of human observers making judgments about what they see, hear, or feel. Psychophysics quantitatively investigates the relationship between physical stimuli and the sensations and perceptions they produce. Psychophysics has been described as, the scientific study of the relation between stimulus and sensation, or, more completely, as, the analysis of perceptual processes by studying the effect on a subject's experience or behavior of systematically varying the properties of a stimulus along one or more physical dimensions. Psychophysics also refers to a general class of methods that can be applied to study a perceptual system. Modern applications rely heavily on threshold measurement, ideal observer analysis, and signal detection theory. In 1860 Gustav Theodor Fechner in Leipzig published Element der Psychophysik, he coined the term psychophysics, describing research intended to relate physical stimuli to the contents of consciousness such as sensations. In the early 1830s by the German physiologist Ernst Heinrich Weber in Leipzig. Most notably those on the minimum discernible difference in intensity of stimuli of moderate strength, just noticeable difference, which Weber had shown to be a constant fraction of the reference intensity, and which Fechner referred to as Weber's law. From this, Fechner derived his well-known logarithmic scale, now known as Fechner scale. Weber's and Fechner's work formed one of the bases of psychology as a science, with Wilhelm Wundt founding the first laboratory for psychological research in Leipzig. During the 1930s, when psychological research in Nazi Germany essentially came to a halt, both approaches eventually began to be replaced by use of stimulus-response relationships as evidence for conscious or unconscious processing in the mind. Stevens revived the idea of a power law suggested by 19th century researchers, in contrast with Fechner's log linear function, Stevens' power law. 5. Constructivist approach Cognitive constructivism has its roots in cognitive psychology and biology and an approach to education that lays emphasis on how the individual learner, maker of meanings, the ways knowledge is created in order to adapt to the world in which the mechanisms of accommodation and assimilation are key to this processing. Jean Piaget his work led to the expansion of understanding of child development and learning as a process of construction that has underpinned much of the theories relating to constructivism. A key assumption of constructivism is that mental structures are created from earlier structures, not directly from environmental information. From this perspective then knowledge is not passively transmitted from the environment to the individual, but rather is the result of active cognizing from the cumulative experiences of the individual. Piaget defined three essential components, namely equilibration, assimilation and accommodation to describe the growth of knowledge. Equilibration is the central learning mechanism and the motivating force behind cognitive development, which refers to the optimal state of the cognitive structures being really consistent with the external environment. Assimilation and accommodation are complementary processes to deal with the cognitive conflict. In this way, the linked processes are the means by which the state of equilibrium, or adaptation, is sought. So the child is either applying previously acquired skills to a new situation in order to understand it or adjusting the skills or accommodating acquired skills to better understand a situation. Cognitive constructivism is linked to instructional approaches and strategies such as metacognition and self-regulated learning, reading to learn, problem-based learning, project-based learning, arguing to learn, critical thinking, peer learning, productive failure, web-based scientific inquiry, concept mapping, inquiry-based learning, accountable talk. 
6. Neurophysiological approach The study of underlying neurophysiological bases of psychological functions. Neurophysiological approaches are theoretical concepts based on practical knowledge of understanding the physiology that helps CNS function. Neurophysiological approaches utilizes CNS plasticity. It contributes to the adaptation and reorganization of CNS function. Correct and repeated stimulation through neurophysiological approaches can lead to non-involved part of the brain functionally compensating for the affected area of the brain. Major communication systems of the body. The nervous system is the focus of most research in this area. Neurophysiological psychologists study the functioning of the brain and the nervous system. The neurophysiological psychologists look for links between cognitive functions and processes in the nervous system of patients. 7. Ecological approach rooted from both psychology and anthropology. Central tenet of the approach is cognition does not occur in isolation from larger cultural contexts. All cognitive activities are shaped by the culture and by the context in which they occur. There is influences of both functionalist and the gestalt schools on ecological approach. The ecological approach would deny the usefulness of studying cognitive phenomena in artificial circumstances divorced from larger contexts. This tradition relies more on naturalistic observations and field studies and less relies on laboratory experiments or computer simulations. Jean Lave in the book, Cognition in Practice, Mind, Mathematics and Culture in Everyday Life, from 1988, she criticized the decontextualized understanding of learning within the behaviorist and cognitive psychology, where learning has been understood as consisting of isolated processes whether they be mechanical behavioral response or inner cognitive processes. Together with Etienne Wenger she has formulated a theory of situated learning. In the influential book, situated learning, legitimate, peripheral participation are described. 8. Evolutionary approach. Evolutionary psychology is the second wave of the cognitive revolution. The first wave focused on computational processes that generate knowledge about the world. Perception, attention, categorization, reasoning, learning, and memory. The second wave views the brain as composed of evolved computational systems, engineered by natural selection to use information to adaptively regulate physiology and behavior. This shift in focus, from knowledge acquisition to the adaptive regulation of behavior, provides new ways of thinking about every topic in psychology. It suggests a mind populated by a large number of adaptive specializations, each equipped with content-rich representations, concepts, inference systems, and regulatory variables which are functionally organized to solve the complex problems of survival and reproduction encountered by the ancestral hunter-gatherers from whom we are descended. Evolutionary psychologist Lita Cosmides, 1989, notes that the environments out ancestors experienced were not simply physical but ecological and social as well. Humans have specialized areas of competence produced by our evolutionary heritage. Cosmides and Tubi, 2002, argue that people have a large and heterogeneous set of evolved reliably developing, dedicated problem-solving programs, each of which is specialized to solve a particular domain or class of adaptive problems. In other words, people have special purpose mechanisms specific to a certain context or class of problems. Cosmides and Tubi believe that some of the most significant issues our ancestors faced involved social issues, such as creating and enforcing social contracts. Evolutionary psychologists predict that people's reasoning will be especially enhanced when they are reasoning about cheating. In general, evolutionary psychologists believe we understand a system best if we understand the evolutionary pressure on our ancestors. We present recent empirical examples that illustrate how this approach has been used to discover new features of attention, categorization, reasoning, learning, emotion, and motivation.